Uh, hey everyone, uh, this is Paul. I just got back home after seeing Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse today. I really wasn't expecting to see this movie on a Thursday instead of Friday. I've never really done that before, but it was really exciting. Um, I happened to see this movie in IMAX. Uh, I can't remember ever seeing a movie in IMAX, but this is my first time in memory. Uh, it's well worth it. Uh, I recommend Center. If you're going to do IMAX, don't do Far Right or Far Left. It's a little harder to see the screen. But really worth it. Really great sound. Um, so, really fast, I did a poor job with my gut reaction for Guardians, Across the, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Guardians Across the Galaxy, uh, because just I was really busy and I was with a bunch of other people so I couldn't do a little argument recording. A lot of people was like, why is this just five seconds long? Uh, bottom line, I really love that movie. Uh, if you want to see my slightly extended thoughts on movies, and especially movies that didn't just come out in theaters, uh, go to my letterbox. I have a link that in the description of this video, and I'm going to do it for all gut reactions to check out more thoughts. But finally, move on. Under. My, glass, my glasses are upside down. My glasses are upside down. You can tell how out of it I am. It's like midnight. We just got home because this is a two and a half hour long movie. Um, in all honesty, the original Into the Spider Verse is my favorite movie of all time. No chance. No hold bars. That's my favorite movie ever made. This, as of now at least, is my favorite sequel ever made, which was previously held by Puss in Boots The Last Wish. So that is massive praise for me. This movie is extremely funny. It's remarkably engaging. The two and a half hours go by like this. I have never found myself so content and patient for a two and a half hour movie. Like, I, I had to go to the bathroom for the last half hour. I didn't want to. I didn't want to miss any part of this. I didn't feel fidgety. I wasn't getting sore in my seat. I utterly loved it, because like, even movies like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which are pretty long, I had moments where I was feeling a little sore near the end, just because I was sitting too long. Not with this movie. The voice acting is utterly phenomenal in this movie. Everyone does an amazing job. I cannot praise the animation of this video enough. Like, I'm talking so much about this movie right now, I'm definitely going to do a proper review of this as best as I can sometime soon. I'm at least going to try it, because I have so many thoughts about this movie. Um... It doesn't reach Puss in Boots The Last Wish levels of dodging a PG rating, but this movie legitimately knows when to use slight cuss words. Like, both damn it and ass actually show up in this movie casually, not censored, and that really feels weird, just because of how stupid rating systems are right now, but again, for a kid's movie like Puss in Boots The Last Wish, which this is not, I don't think this is a kid's movie, I don't even think it's a family movie, I think it's a movie movie made for all ages, all, all ages, you will find something you appreciate in this movie. Uh, if you're an animation buff, you are going to utterly adore this movie. If you're a fan of hand-drawn animation, there's little things that you'll notice or that you'll pick up on that you'll appreciate. If you're a fan of CGI, you're going to love all the new things that they do with this. Like, literally, unless you don't like animation, you're going to love this film. Unless you don't like animation or you thought the first one was too fast for you. Like, a really important key, basic key of am I going to like this movie or not is if you liked the first one or not, for its pacing and its fast energy. If you thought the first one was too much happening at once and the animation really overwhelmed you, you're not going to like this movie. And that's not your fault, it's not the movie's fault, it's just the way it is. Um, because this movie just does so much. It doesn't have, like, big flashing lights or loud noises or anything that I would say deserves an epilepsy warning before the movie. It's just so colorful and so much is happening all at once. I'm really trying not to go into spoilers here. There's a ton of massive story beats that are insanely cool when they come up. Uh, there's a lot of little things, a bunch of references, a lot of, are they going to do that? Is this going to show up? Oh my gosh, they did that? Wait, they went to that universe? Oh my gosh, this universe uses this? Wait, these are connected? Lots of stuff like that, especially if you're a Spider-Man fan like me. Uh, if you're a Sony Spider-Man fan, there's moments here for you that you're going to utterly love. Like, I gotta sit down the camera. Wait, I don't do this usually. Sweet, okay, I have to set down the camera and talk about this. Like, there is so much about this movie that I utterly loved. Um, like, literally, like, much like the first one, I legitimately can't say I have actual flaws with this movie. I have nitpicks at the absolute most, and I think those are more nitpicks I'll notice on future viewings, because I'm definitely seeing this movie again and again. I gotta see this movie again in theaters. Um, 
there's one last thing, though, that I need to make really clear, because, like, I would love to go into spoilers, but I probably have better do that for review, because there's lots of little things and stuff I want to geek out about, and, like, this character does this, and they do these, and these characters do this together, and the music is amazing, and the animation does this, and then they does this, and they have a fight scene like this, and then this happens, and then this comes back from the last movie, like, they even bring, like, this little thing that you probably didn't even know was in the movie, and, like, you missed it for a second, but now it's part of this movie, but you don't have to have known it was in the first movie to be in this one. A lot of stuff like that, but I have to make this clear right now, so... I'm pretty sure a lot of people in my audience didn't know this. Uh, they made it clear, like, Phil Lorgan, Chris and Miller. The writers. I'm sorry, Phil Lorgan, Chris Miller, I'm probably getting their names wrong, I don't remember them. I'm not great with names, like, Trey and Matt. I don't know which one's Stone, which one's Parker. Uh, I've been getting off track. Hey, Parker. Uh, Peter Parker. No, whatever. Getting off track. Um, so, they have made this clear personally. Um, this is... The equivalent to Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars. Don't come into this movie thinking that it's going to end end. It ends on a cliffhanger. It ends on a really good cliffhanger, but this is the second film in a trilogy. But it is an intentional trilogy that's planned out. Like the first three Star Wars, you have the first movie. It has a happy ending. It closes up. There's little things, but all the big moments happen. We meet these wonderful characters. It's a great movie. Empire Strikes Back escalates everything, introduces new ideas, introduces new characters, and it ends with a phenomenal cliffhanger where the heroes are in their darkest hour, in they are in the crises piece of the hero's journey. journey. That is where this movie works. And the third movie is The Return of the Jedi, finishing everything. This one is called Beyond the Spider-Verse. That's the official name of it. They've already revealed that. That that's the official name of the third movie. So don't come into this movie expecting it to end end when it gets to the ending. Because I think there were some people in my theater who who felt like that, and that might sour your taste of the movie overall. So just without spoiling anything, I'm going to try my best not to. I'm probably already revealed a few things, but I utterly loved this movie. I loved it so much. Easily five out of five stars for me. Go check it out on my letterbox for even more. I'm Paul, this was a gut reaction, I'm finally going to try and do these again, especially since there's a ton of movies in June, I'm going to try and do more of these. Thank you all so much for watching, I utterly love this movie, go see it, go see it with some friends, go see it with people that you know would love this movie, because it's better with other people, get your family to see it, but make sure they've seen the first one first. And if you have a friend who like thinks animation is for children, or, or adult who thinks animation is for children, because there's more of those than there are friends, there are more people who think adults are for children than there are people our age, our demographic, honestly. We are the demographic who understands what's actually adult. But just if you have someone who thinks Spider-Man isn't an interesting character, you think animation is a form for medium for children, and it's not something that can pull off adult works, go see this. Go see this movie and see what an adult movie actually looks like. That's all I can really say. Um, really not much else I can add. I utterly love this movie. I'm going to bring more friends to try and see it together. Five out of five stars. Utterly loved it. Didn't love it more than the first, only because the first one means so much to me. But this is easily more than a worthy sequel. When I was really concerned, they might muck things up somewhere. As someone who hates, hates spider getting this was how to do spider Ganon right, in my opinion. And if that isn't praise coming from me, then trust me, you don't know what praise is coming from me. I'm Paul. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys soon.